Hey YouTube, as I promised, I got my uh, piston installer for Turbo 400 and I'll, I'll show you how it works. Um, I got a couple, uh, I got a direct drum, I got a forward drum, I got uh, a piston with brand new seals, and then I even got one of the um, composite pistons with the, the seals kind of vulcanized onto it. So uh, I'll show you uh, with and without it. And I mean, you can determine up to you what you want to do. I'll give you uh, dimensions on it if you want to make one yourself or possibly have one made. Um, and we'll go from there. I'll, I'll zoom in on this so you, you can kind of see a little better. And uh, let's hit it. Okay, so here we got a direct drum for a four, Turbo 400. Um, I'll show you really quick with this. Uh, just place it around the outside. Make sure it's fully seated. Uh, this is the one off of uh, that I got on eBay. Uh, I'll put a link on it if you guys are interested in it. Even if you just use this with a lip lizard, it, it works pretty good. So, but uh, without even putting any trans gel on it, um, you can see it's very dry. Yeah. Bam. With no trans gel. No, no nothing to lubricate it while it went on. That's how it, nice it did go on. So, um, now when you use this with the lip lizard, I, I gotta put trans gel all on it. Get it everywhere. Now, just because it went on really nice and easy with the the ring and stuff, without trans gel or any type of lube, you still should lube it up. I mean, it's just gonna make it that much better and safer and less likely to wreck your seals I like to fill in uh, the little gaps and then you know at the end you you can push it in and it holds it a little bit uh, I put this on uh, the Facebook forum for turbo 400 that uh put my tool that I made and uh, I did have a comment where the guy said he uh, uses hose clamps and puts it in the freezer now I went to Wyoming Tech and they actually did that a lot but I mean man that's a long time to wait for you know one set of pistons or Harbourman pistons are in your transmission to put all those hose hose clamps on them put them in the freezer you're gonna have to leave them in there for quite a while and then not mix them up and you're gonna have a freezer full of pistons and whatnot uh so even if you got this and a lip wizard you definitely don't need to freeze them um so went in putting this on
with the whip wizard so that wasn't too bad um, you just gotta be a little more careful and uh, this really gets full of trans gel or Vaseline or whatever you're using so I, I do try to wipe them down a little bit but as as you can see not having to do that center one with you know the little wire or feeler gauge or something man it makes it so much easier and then uh, so even if you just had this and this to do these or oh it would save you time. So there's those two. Um, and then this, I'll put a little lube on your composite one. works exactly the same on your forward got this custom forward drum holder it's a Harley head with a plastic hole big plastic piece with a hole in it and this just bring it up and up <laughs> normally I, I have a different work area and I have a hole in my table and you drop it right in there but uh <coughs> That's in the big garage and it's cold and <laughs> cold and cold. So we'll just run this one on. So if you can tell me you're doing it that quick with a feeler gauge. Hey man, you, you, you've probably been doing it for 50 years and that's awesome, but you know, if you own a shop and you had these tools, you know, okay, with a lip wizard, you probably can do it 20, 30 seconds, you know, per drum, um, you know, you do multiple rebuilds a day. You know, it, it adds up to, you know, that's, I don't know what, five seconds to do it with this. So, you know, say you got 30 seconds, it's taken you 25 seconds every, every drum that you could be doing something else. I mean, if you want to add it all up, you know, throughout the year, that's, that could save you money and time. Um, and it, this is a turbo 400 one, uh, you know, it works for the 4L80 one too. This is a 4L80 drum. There's a centerpiece. for all those okay here we go on uh, measurements and stuff so the, the piece that I had um, I started with was a 7 inch OD and a 5 inch ID uh, you 
large chunk of aluminum. Um, you could use steel also. Uh, I tried plastic, but um, when it got so thin, it just it just kind of blew apart and jump out of the chuck all the time. So that didn't work at all. Um, so here are the dimensions for you. So the inside dimension down here on the, the thinnest part is going to be 5.894. Um, so when I held this in the, the chuck, uh, I clamped it from this side. Uh, my overall length when I had this cut out was uh, three and three quarters. Um, I didn't even clean my lathe up yet. But this is the way I have my, my chalk to hold it in there like that. So I'll go back here. So, okay. So I had it at three and three quarters chucked in there. And then uh, I kept going until I got this dimension first, the inside bore. Um, like I said, it was 5.894. And I went all the way and I left probably mm, I'd say a good half inch. Uh, I just stop a half inch short. That way it had the full width of material to grab onto and it wouldn't deform the part. So I, I kept going in. Uh, I would say, yeah, probably three and three eighths. Um, the, the factory one is only three inches. So, I mean, you could do three inches. Uh, it just more material you got to take off later so I, I went as far as I could with it being able to hang on and not letting loose so I did this uh, inside diameter first um, and then after that I made sure I, I faced this edge uh, this edge when it was full width uh, outside diameter yet um, faced it and then took a nice clean cut as far as I could go before hitting the chuck you know that way you had a nice clean surface and everything was basically square to the inside and then I took the material out clamped it from this side with it being full length uh, and then I did you basically have a big chunk left of raw material from where it was clamped on so you, you kind of got to cut that down um i was only doing thirty thousandths cut so that's why it took so long i didn't want it flying out and chattering and anything else so uh it took a long time because of that but i have it you know it, it didn't wreck itself or anything so that's all i wanted uh, and once I got rid of the the outside diameter, you know, I, I you could keep it at seven inches, but uh, I think I, I got it around uh, six and three quarters. Um, you know, the less time you're taking material off, the the quicker you're done. So you could keep it the full, but I, I ended up just taking it down a little bit to clean it up and whatnot. So. Once you get that, and then uh, I put a taper on here, uh, seven and a half degree taper. Um, and I don't have a, a taper attachment. I, I just use my, my cross feed and, you know, turn it on the compound rest and turn it nice and even. You know, just keep going 20 thousandths cut and uh, this dimension, I went, it ended up coming to 
1.28, that's how far of a depth I went from once you face off the edge and make however the edge you want it, however long. Uh, seven and a half degrees and it's 1.28. You could go a little more. I just wanted to make sure it didn't come in any interference with uh, this big kind of cut here. So I wanted to keep it above that. I'm probably three-eighths above it. So that's that dimension. And then once I finished this edge all up, um, I flipped it back around and then I started cutting this down. Now, I wasn't able to really measure the inside um, of the drum, so I basically would got it close to where I needed to be and then I'd take a little off, check the drum, take a little off, check the drum until I got the, the right dimension. So. Uh, when you, if you do this, if you do decide to make this to yourself, you know, I would stop a little bit before the dimensions I give you and, um, you know, check the piston, make sure the piston fits in there. You know, I, you can pretty much take any, any aluminum one and then put it in there and make sure, you know, it don't have a whole lot of play in there. So that's how I did that. Uh, so this outside dimension um, ended up being exactly six inches, 6.000. Uh, and as I was cutting, you know, when you uh, load your drum up with all the clutches and stuff, you got that shelf in there. So I wanted to keep that little extra material on there. So this dimension from the very top to the shelf is 1.605 and then I made this this little part here um, 0 0.390 so you probably you could make it a little more a little less it's up to you um, and then for the dimension on that part would be 6.080. So it's 40 thousandths thicker on each side, so 80 thousandths total. Um, the thickness of this material on the edge, if you want to measure it once you start cutting, uh, I have at 44 thousandths. So. 0.044. Um, that looks like it. That's all the dimensions. Uh, if you have any questions, um, send me a message. Uh, you know, if you had a buddy with a CNC or something and you made that out of steel, it, it lasts a really long time. Aluminum, it, it, you know, being pretty thin here, it, it can get, you got to be careful when you're setting it in there because it'll bite it up a little bit. Um, and then I, I use uh, emery cloth just to smooth it all out and everything works good but there are your dimensions that's the order of operations that I, I used when I uh, machined it um, you you can do whatever you want I mean don't let anybody tell you can't make anything you want uh, but yeah any questions let me know uh, like and subscribe Thank you guys.